1967 had been a great year, the Diamond Jubilee of the TT and Agostini and Halewood's classic race. The next 20 years would see the arrival of the most successful rider in the TT's history and its greatest threat. Downgrade, taken absolutely flat out by the fastest machines on race day. That's what we've got in, and Phil Reed is going to be away first, but Mike is with them as well, and who's going to be leading as they leave us here? They're side by side! Racing isn't dangerous, it's crashing that's dangerous. So. Firstly, the mechanic taps me on the shoulder before I go, every time, and I always get eye contact with my wife before I go, just in case. And I make that a lap unofficially in 18 minutes, 32 seconds, but what the hell does it matter about the lap time? Joey Dunlop has done it. To hear it is better than sex. This is the story of the TT. During the two decades up to 1967, the TT had grown up. Granted world championship status in 1949, it was now a world-famous event, attracting the very best riders, all determined to take on what was recognised as the toughest challenge in racing. But not all the media attention was positive, and the misgivings of some of the outsiders were beginning to be reflected in the attitudes of some of the racers. The next part of the story, told by Jeff Cannell, Phil Edge and Terry Kringle, with the help of Matthew Richardson from the Manx Museum, is about survival and reinvention. It was a sort of regrouping year, really. Um, people by then had found out that Mike Halewood had gone, that the days of the exotic Hondas had gone because they'd withdrawn from racing, and all in all it was time to have a new look at it. Jeff Cannell. But coming up through the ranks were the other Japanese manufacturers, particularly Yamaha, and they had Phil Reed and Bill Ivey, who were at each other's throats in the 125 and the 250 categories. An agreement had been made in Tokyo by Yamaha, which both riders had signed up to, that one would win the 125 World Championship and the other would go for the 250. But unfortunately, when you get people like Phil Reed, he doesn't always play the game, or he didn't, and uh, he decided that he would go for both if he could, and it made for a fantastic atmosphere. Phil, what about uh, team tactics? Do we have any in the Yamahas these days? Um, as yet for the TT, uh, no. So in other words, we, we might well expect a nice little dice between you and Bill? Yes. We'll both be trying. There's no sort of set plan between either of you? No. And the arrangement was that Phil Reed would win the 125 TT. Bill Ivey went out, did a 100 miles an hour average speed lap on the 125, which was unheard of. And it wasn't long before the excited crowds heard this announcement. First 100 mile an hour lap in 125 CC TT racing. Congratulations to Bill Ivey, number nine, 22 minutes, 34 seconds, average 100.32 miles per hour. And then pulled up at Craig Nabar and asked the crowd who's leading the race, obviously to waste a minute till Phil Reid could catch him up and overtake him to... Uh, win the race. But on the last lap, with Ivy seemingly in trouble, Reed has snatched a three-second lead at the approach to Glen Trammell. And at the grandstand, we await the arrival of Phil Reed to win his third 125 TT. Oh. 